That's good. That's some good progress. There's a couple things to review there, but I think you got the right answer. It's good that you put the aspartic acid on the N terminus and the histidine on the C terminus, because we know that's conventional. So it's important that we went like this. Maybe it would be a good habit to keep labeling our alpha carbons. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. We have to make sure we're getting enough hydrogens on each of the amide nitrogens. Looks like you got that. Very good. Then we know that this is basic. So uh, we need its pKa. And there's a number of side chain number for this. However, we know we don't need to worry about carboxy carbons or nitrogens that are in the amide bond. So we can ignore this. When you looked at asparagine, you saw that there's a dash for the side chain. So we don't need to worry about this being acidic or basic. But histidine, we do need to worry about. So it has a pKa of 6.1. And here you had to use the pKa of the carboxy end, but you didn't for histidine, but you did not need the pKa of the nitrogen, because that was in the amide. That's all good. Then you wrote down the fully protonated form. So our fully protonated form. Now you might have been not actually writing out the whole thing to save time, but what would the fully protonated form of the N-terminus look like for practice? Right. So instead of just putting in the positive charge, if we're going to show the fully protonated form, we should put in that hydrogen. This is already protonated. Mm -hmm. This is already protonated. Now here we have a difficulty. Is this going to gain a proton or lose a proton? Is this acidic or basic? It is acidic. Take your time. How can we tell whether the histidine side chain is acidic or basic? It's basic, actually. Because it has the little c. Mm -hmm. So does it have a neutral and a positive form or a neutral and a negative form? It would be a neutral and a positive form. Good, which confirms what you'd already figured out. So you're on the right track there. But did you realize we have to figure out which nitrogen to protonate, this one or this one? This is kind of like when we saw arginine. With arginine, there was three different nitrogens, and we had to figure out which nitrogen to protonate. Well, here we have two different nitrogens, and again, we have to figure out which nitrogen to protonate. So we have to decide whether it should be this nitrogen over here or this nitrogen over here. Well, here's the way to figure that out. This would like to be aromatic. It would like to be aromatic, but to be aromatic, it would need to have 2, 6, 10, 14, something in this series of pi electrons. This is the condition for being aromatic. Now remember that the pi electrons are in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. The pi electrons are in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. Only electrons in p orbitals can give us this. Well, all of these atoms here are sp2 hybridized. All of these atoms are sp2 hybridized, which means they all have only one p orbital. Something that's sp2 hybridized has three sp2 orbitals and only one p orbital. Mm -hmm. What is this nitrogen? Now, this nitrogen has a lone pair that you might think is going to be basic. And this nitrogen also has a lone pair that you might think is going to be basic. What is this nitrogen doing with its one p orbital? What's this nitrogen doing with its p orbital? Lone pair right well, this is a pi bond, right? Oh. So it must be using its p orbital for the pi bond. So what type of orbital is this lone pair in? It must be in an sp2 orbital, because there's only one p orbital. So are these pi electrons? No. Because they're not in a p orbital. Right. Now, how about this nitrogen? Can this nitrogen put its lone pair in a p orbital? Yes, because it doesn't have to make a pi bond. So this is in a p orbital. So are these pi electrons? So how many pi electrons do we have total? Two. In the whole ring. How many pi electrons in the whole ring? Oh, six. Two here in this pi bond, two in this pi bond, and two here in this p orbital. Mm -hmm. So this is aromatic. Mm -hmm. So does this nitrogen want to donate this pair? No, because then it would lose the aromaticity. Right. It would lose the aromaticity because these electrons are already doing good work for it as, as being pi electrons. Mm -hmm. If it suddenly formed a bond with these, these couldn't be pi electrons anymore in a sigma bond. So these are not available for, for donation. But are these electrons available for donation? Yes, because they're not part of the pi system. 
These are not part of the pi system. This nitrogen already is using its p orbital for its pi bond, so these are not part of the pi system. So, which of, which of nitrogen, which is the nitrogen that's going to donate its lone pair? This one up here? Yeah, that was what your original guess was as well, but it's important to see what the reason for that is. So you should make a clear point in your notes that this is the basic nitrogen, and you could definitely be asked to explain why that is. So we just went through the explanation for why that is as well. What, which of these nitrogens wants to donate its lone pair? The one which is not using the lone pair for pi electrons. So does resonance not work for this? You also could also give a resonance argument. You could also give a resonance argument. This is maybe a little bit better, but maybe it would be best to use both. You could also give a resonance argument. There's a resonance structure yeah, where this nitrogen has, oh, is that actually how you worked it out? Yeah, oh, I didn't even see that. All right, that's good. That's good that you thought about that. There's a resonance structure where this nitrogen has a negative charge. But you know, That's not, that's not a bad argument. I think the aromaticity argument maybe is a little bit better, but they're, they're both good to know. But you're right, there is a resonance structure where this has a negative charge. That would also tend to indicate that this is the basic. But that doesn't explain why this one isn't basic. Right. That doesn't explain why they're not both basic. So, um, so it's good to know, it's good that you thought about resonance, but the aromaticity is, is also very important. But it's good that you saw that there was two possibilities here for the two nitrogen. Okay, so for the one hand, we should maybe just memorize that this is the basic nitrogen, but we need to be able to explain why that is. And we have a resonance argument and an aromaticity argument too. The basic lone pair is going to be the lone pair that's not being used in the pi system, because the pi system is providing the aromaticity. We don't want to donate those. Well, this nitrogen is using its lone pair for the pi system, so these are not basic. But this nitrogen is not using its lone pair for the pi system. Instead, it's got its contribution to the pi system is from the pi bond. So this lone pair is available to be donated. This just confirms that you were right all along. The protonated form would look like this when this nitrogen is protonated. I think that originally you might have left off this proton, however. If we're going to draw the protonated form, we can't just put in the positive charge. We have to show this proton. When this nitrogen is neutral, it has no protons. But when this nitrogen is protonated, it has one proton. And this nitrogen will always have just one proton because there's only one form for this. And then I think the rest of the problem didn't give you too much more trouble. So the fully protonated form here has a plus two charge. Right. Then the lowest of our pKa's is 1.8. And then the next form would have a plus one charge. And the next lowest of our pKa's is 3.7. So our next charge would be zero. And the next pKa would be 6.1. That would give us the plus 1. And then above that, we could put 9.6. And top is the plus 2. I got these wrong. Thanks. Minus 1 and minus 2. Good. And then to find the pi, you average these two numbers together. All right, and what did you get? Uh, 4.9. Good. How would you find the pH? at which we get the maximum concentration of the plus one form. I would average 1.8 and 1.7. And how would we find, that was good. And how do we find the pH at which we have equal concentrations of the negative one and the negative two forms? It would be at 9.6. Good. So we made some good progress on that. And now I think we've seen the last of the tricky side chains. We've gone through all the tricky side chains as well. Sometimes it's not that easy to tell who gets protonated or deprotonated in the side chain. We saw arginine was tricky, but we worked that out using resonance. And now we've seen histidine is tricky, but we worked that out using resonance and the aromaticity argument. It's also good that you uh, drew this ring structure correctly. It's, it's easy to draw this incorrectly, but you took your time and used numbering. Good. Well, that's good progress. I think now we can draw. So what are the types of questions you can answer now? Well, suppose you might say something like, draw this peptide at a pH of 3. How would you draw this peptide at a pH of 3? Uh, let's see. That's um, the OH on the end would be deprotonated, so you have an O minus. And everything else would be protonated as it already is. And that would give us a net charge of? So plus two. 
Nope. It's not possible. It'll be plus one. Which we can already see from our work here. We can see that when the pH is between 1.8 and 3.7, we should have a net charge of plus one. So that confirms that you are right all along. Good. Okay, so usually the instructor is not going to just say, draw a spartic acid disparaging histidine. They're going to say, draw it at a particular pH. So you have to take that into account when you're putting in who's protonated and who's not protonated. And we can also answer questions like finding the pH at which we have equal concentrations of two species or the pH at which we get the maximum concentration of one species, including the PI, which is the maximum concentration of the zwitterion. All right, very good.